but it was months and months. Yeah. And so, and I, again, Ted didn't recollect whether, again, I'm just, I'm just purely speculation. I, Ted didn't never told me this. I don't know if like, you know, the president of Warner brothers was calling off to, te- to Ed and saying, what the hell's going on up there? We need the record. Like, you know, basically like you guys are, are screwing us over by not delivering the record. I don't know that. Yeah. But Ted said he got a call and said, you know, he said, yeah, I'll go, go up there and whatever. I mean, you know, he said when Ed called, I, I helped him, you know, and so in, yeah, the, he, in he, that uh, vein, in that vein, do you think if it was Ed coming to him before 5150 instead of Sam and begged him to do the record, do you think he would have done it? I suspect what he would have said it was, you know, you should get back with Dave. I mean, I think I think obviously by the time Sam approached Ted, basically on the behest of, behest of the band, obviously, it was already a done deal with Sammy. Like Sammy was, quote unquote, in the band, right. basically, you know, right. at that point, you know, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can't speak to what would have what would have happened. I certainly think that. It was it was an awkward thing for Ted with Sammy because he liked Sammy and want you know he had just done Sammy's VOA record. It was nothing personal against Sammy. I think Sammy, understandably, probably you know was pissed off. You know they were they were they were pissed off. He and uh, Leffler were pissed off about it because they were like, what the fuck? But you know, like Ted said, it was that's what it was hard for me to articulate to those guys. It was nothing personal against Sammy. You know, I love Sammy, but it just didn't feel right to me. And so, you know, that was, I don't know if it would have been different if Ed had asked. I'm sure he would have sure said, you need to get Dave back. Do you think part yeah, of the reason that Ted came back for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge is because Van Halen had returned back to guitar rock? No, I, I don't think so. I, no, I don't. I don't think I think he said yes before he even heard the material. So I think it was more he and Ed had been I'm remembering the sequence of time. He and Ed had already done the the private life record. So they had already sort of, you know, hung out and done the private life record and I I think even if that hadn't happened, I think if those guys called, he felt a loyalty to Ed and didn't do it out of loyalty, but I think he always felt as if that, you know, regardless of whatever happened in the past, he had enormous amount of respect and affection you know, I think almost like a like a fatherly way for for Ed, and I don't want to overstate that, but I think he really felt, you know, like really had great great love for Ed Van Halen, and like if Ed called and said, "Ted, can you help me? Can you do this?" and Ted would say, "Yeah," and I think that was part of the reason why it was a, a, such an emotional thing for Ted too about not doing the Van Halen record with Sammy because he, you know, he loved all those guys. You know, he loved Mike, he loved Al, like you know, he, he was uh, those guys were there from him for the with the beginning, and so I think that was where it was really like a an angst filled things for for Ted that why he maybe he came back. And again, that's just my speculation. He said, okay, I'll do it if you change the name. Kind of like going, shit, I, you know, I just, I owe it to these guys. I'll do it. Just change the name. And, you know, understandably, they weren't game for that. Now, the other thing was, I thought there was an interesting part of the book. It gets a little murky. So he produces VOA for Sam. He produces 1984. He he does the uh, Crazy from the Heat EP. And then you're at a point where he says, well, Sammy said that I told him about Dave leaving Van Halen, but I don't remember. And then he said, there was a quote in here that said, what Sammy did isn't much different than the guy who puts a move on a wife who has recently separated from her husband, which was an interesting comparison. He said, if Ed hadn't connected with Sammy through Claudio, Dave would have returned to the fold and Van Halen would have eventually repaired itself. But with Sammy in the picture, both sides dug in their heels in. Now, it's interesting because it seems like Sam kind of took advantage of the situation a little bit. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm starting to l- not really believe the whole Claudio scenario with the with the Ferrari thing anymore. It seems like a little bit of a parable from the Bible at this point. No, I, don't know. I mean, that's what Ted thinks. Okay? I know. I, mean, I, think, I know I it is, but I'm just saying that I'm not <laughs> criticizing like Ted. I'm it's telling... Like... It's I'm, like the Great Flood. I don't it's believe like, it. I'm telling you right now, I don't believe it. It's a it. conspiracy, Dave. It's yeah, a conspiracy. Exactly. exactly. Put on your tinfoil hat. No, but it's just right. really interesting because he had just produced Sammy's album. He just produced Dave's solo album. He wanted Sam in the band earlier. Then he sort of tells Sam that Dave might be leaving Van Halen. And Sammy takes a movie. I mean, it's just a little too convenient. You know what I mean? And well, I, I don't know. I mean, I think, look, I mean, I think... Actually, it talked about this, and Ted initially did, had no recollection of telling Sam. And I said, well, he said this interview, and he goes, well, I, he goes, he said to me, well, I, if I said it, I just said it in passing. It was like, you know, what's going on? You know, oh, not much. You know, we're, you know when are we going to start your next solo record? Okay, next month, meeting Sam. And they're like, what's going on with you, Ted? Oh, you know, got a big mess here. Dave's leaving Van Halen or something like that. But it wasn't like Ted. Ted's point, it was that he didn't pick up the phone 
to give Sam a heads up. No, but but, I, but that's it. all he you need to like, tell. That's all you need to tell Sam. Forget it. He smells I, blood in the I water. Don't think, I, mean, I don't think in Ted's wildest dreams he ever ever would have imagined that Sam would have become the singer of Van Halen. I know, but Sam's an opportunist, and you know he's you know <laughs> he, he, he fucking a. Okay, I, well that's not Ted. You know that's not Ted's problem. No, I'm not, blaming, I mean, I'm not blaming. I'm not blaming Ted. I'm not blaming Ted. I'm just saying that. You know, Sam is a very sharp cookie, and we have proved that time and time again. Most of these guys are musician types. You know, they're into the music. Sammy is as sharp as a razor's edge. And there's, well, a, there's a reason right, why. Let me go back. Wait a second. Wow, Dave, you just cannot accept the fact that these two guys just happen to have the same car mechanic. And that's exactly. how the band Oh, I don't believe that. that. I don't exactly. believe it at all. I think – I'll tell you why. Let like, me tell you why. Like people who what? can't believe that Kennedy got shot by a lone No, Kennedy, you – listen to listen me. Listen to me. Right. It, right. I, I have been a journalist for long enough time to smell a press release story. And I'm just telling you that that sounds like it was cooked up in the PR department. Oh, they both share a Claudio. Hey, Claudio. I bet you Claudio hardly speaks English. I mean, you don't even know <laughs> if Claudio could, uh, Claudio's going to turn. Hey, Sammy. Hey, da-. But Ed and Sammy already knew each other. It's not like no one uh, knew it. Sammy existed and Ed didn't know. I mean, for Christ's sake, they played on the same bill together. Claudio's in the 55 video. Claudio's in that video. Uh, Congratulations for Claudio. And you know what? I'm willing to find Claudio and interview this guy because I don't think he'd hold up in the questioning. (laughs) Well, according to you, I hope you speak Italian because you're not going to get much of an interview from him. I know. Let me go back to what you guys said about the the part of the book that I worked on with Ted about the, you know, I think, I think Ted's, point was he believed at the time that those guys just needed to spend some time apart and that because right. sammy showed up he's a great singer sammy can write sammy became the, the easy replacement for dave and right. that's not a knock on sammy because sammy's a talented guy in his own way right and i think what ted is saying is like you know if those guys had just spent three four five months apart from each other there someone would have been like all right i'm picking up the phone i'm gonna call and say hey like i'm sorry and that's, that's what ted believes you know, that may not be true. Um, okay. Maybe Ed doesn't believe that. Maybe Dave doesn't believe that. Maybe Mike Anthony doesn't believe that. Whatever happened, they all hated each other, whatever. Right. But that's what Ted said at the time. He was pissed off because he said, fuck. You know, it's like Sammy went in there and, no, you know, look, he's, you know, he was he was the right guy to step in those shoes to make it work with a new singer. And that's not a knock on Sammy. That's actually a compliment for Sammy. No, but, of course. Ted wanted Dave to go back. Right, you know, and that's why he was like, "Shit! If, if they if they had just spent four months apart stewing, it would have fixed itself." That's what Ted believed. Right. Well, you know what's also interesting, though. I, I thought it was very well written, Greg. You did a great job, and there was so many things in here that I didn't know, and it was very interesting. Here's another left hook where he starts telling Sammy that he should do an R and B album, which right. which was shocking, and and Sammy was apparently quote unquote heartbroken over it. I mean, what? the hell was that all about if you listen to what sammy's original roots are if you ever read interviews with him talk about it i mean he was a james brown guy from right. the beginning that's what and so ted was ted ted thought okay look you know you can you know you can keep doing the sort of i can't drive 55 sort of like blue collar rock or you're a better artist than that basically you could do a stuff like van morrison used to do where you, you would sure. have a wider catalog and basically really show off your full talents. I mean, that was what Ted was trying to say to Sammy was like, you know, you can do so much more than you're doing. It's not a knock. He's like, I liked, he thought it was funny. He loved doing the VOA record. It's fun. But he's like, you know what? You're, you're better than this in terms of your, you could raise your game and do a better type of, I don't say better, but a, a more sophisticated type of music. And that's for Sammy, you know, Sammy's a kind of a lunch pail guy and right. Sammy got felt, ins- I don't think insulted, but sort of like, you know, felt like, oh, Ted doesn't like my music. When Ted was like, I like the music just fine. You know, it's like, I like it just fine. You know, I don't always love everything you write lyrically or whatever, but you know, it's like, you know, I, I did the records cause I like you, but I like your abilities. You're a fucking great singer and a great guy to work with. I guess Ted's perspective was, I don't understand why Sammy felt hurt by that when I'm actually paying him a compliment going, you're so much better skilled than you're showing off to the world. I want to make sure everyone knows you know, you could sing blues, you could sing R&B, you could sing soul. I mean, like, Sammy could sing all that sure stuff. Sure he so, can, You know, yeah. I think that's what Ted was saying is, like, this guy is such an amazing vocalist. Let's not just do another replication of VOA. 
Right. Well, that's interesting. I tell you, though, I wonder if Sam's going to get hurt by hearing that he's a lunch pail guy. I, I, he's probably feels like he could buy and sell everybody. <laughs> he's, he's well, worth- I mean, I think he meant like, hopefully, I mean, that was that, you know, that may have been a word that I that I kind of, you know, you know, to, to sort of sweeten up what Ted was saying. I mean, I think right. what he means, like he's like he was like a blue collar rocker. No, of he course was like he was. Who, like, really saw himself, no, without like, question, he know, is. Without question, he is. But I'm, I'm not a guy. Right. You no, know, I'm, just, I'm joking around. It just it's just uh-huh. funny to me that Sammy is worth more than everybody in Van Halen in total. <laughs> it's just amazing. Oh no me. doubt. I oh mean, yeah. No doubt. He's 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 oh, no he's doubt. and there's a reason, and it's because he's a sharp cookie. So yeah, well, so maybe, now let's let's right. let, let me ask you this though. Switching over to Dave. Now when he had the whole Eat him and Smile band together, Ted had to recognize the incredible magic chemistry in that band. Oh he, yeah. I know he says. Oh yeah. I know when he says in the book, and I love this line in the book. When he talks about how Ladies Night in Buffalo was one of the best things he's ever done in his career. And I thought that was incredible to point that out because that's not a big hit. It's an album track, but I think it's a perfect sounding song and it's really well done. He, you go into detail in the book about the incredible sound of Eat Him and Smile. And let me tell you, it holds up today because you put it next to 5150, and 5150 sounds 30 years old. It does. It really does. 34 years old it is, for Christ's sake. But it's just, it really, really does. It has that freshness. Ted production always has that fresh quality, like we always talked about. Van Halen 1, Van Halen 2. Right. You know, yeah. you play it today, it sounds like it could have been made today. It's that crisp. It's that fresh. I think Nuno Betancourt from Extreme recently said, we always used to gauge our sound based on Van Halen 1 or Van Halen 2 in terms of perfection, as yeah. a goal of perfection. So, you know, I mean, there is something to be said about that. I thought that band wasn't well cherished enough, in my opinion. I thought they were absolutely tremendous. I mean, and, and why they weren't coveted as this brand new rock act, because he was the only one taking up the Van Halen flag. You know, Van Halen in 1986 might have been called Van Halen, but it wasn't even close to Van Halen. Uh, the David Lee Roth band was way closer to Van Halen. And when I went to go see them both in concert, when I saw Roth and I saw him maybe three months later at Madison Square Garden, and I had seen the Van Halen when they did their stint in Jersey in the Meadowlands. I saw them and went home uh, disappointed that I only saw two old Van Halen songs. And then when I went to see Roth, and he was... <laughs> I'm laughing because that's what some guy, I remember some guy I talked to for Van Halen Rising said to me, he wrote me, I asked him about it, he goes, yeah, and then I saw him, the last question I asked him, I said, did you ever see him later? He goes, yeah, I saw them once in like 1986, he's like, man, they only did two Van Halen songs. Yeah, it was he's incredible. Like, it was like... Again, goes back to my point about Sammy being sharp, okay? Who goes into Van Halen and convinces the band named Van Halen to not play Van Halen songs, but we're going to play... Sammy Hagar songs. I mean, they played two yeah. Van Halen songs, and he actually weaseled in I Can't Drive 55, uh, One Way to Rock, and he even threw a Montrose song in there, for Christ's sake. I don't know how he got away with that, especially when they were the biggest band on the face of the earth. Well, it's interesting, like, like Dio didn't, like, they wasn't, you know, it wasn't like Ronnie Jeep's Dio was like, we're going to do an Elf song, we'll do a Rainbow song. Right, you know, it wasn't, yeah. right. Yeah. But here's the other, but the, other, the other thing is, is Sammy took the job as the lead singer of Van Halen. The last time I checked, part of the criteria of being the lead singer of Van Halen is to sing Van Halen songs. But Sammy (laughs) didn't want to do it, and he also got away with it because Ed Lefter, God rest his soul, he was the manager for Sammy, and he became the manager for Van Halen. So therefore, he skewed it. He skewed it that way. And he said, I'll tell you what, boys. Why don't we do a couple of Van Halen songs? We'll do a couple of Sammy songs. You do a couple of covers. You do basically the whole album with the exception of Inside. Everybody takes a solo and we're out the door in two hours. I mean, it just seemed like that was the deal. You know, it's just interesting. You can just see sort of the patterns. You know, things were being skewed a little bit. But getting back to the Dave situation, was the album plan altered from when it was a soundtrack to a solo album? Did he ever talk about that? Right, yeah. So what they did was they actually they cut part of the record at Fantasy Studios in the fall of 
1985, yeah. Yeah. right? And then when the deal fell through and then became sort of this 